Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's great to be here this beautiful sunny afternoon in Chetwin, uh, B.C. Pastor George Rowe from the Chetwin Gospel Tabernacle, and it's a real privilege to share with you today from the Word of God. I, I want to take us back today to the uh, book of Genesis and uh, where it all began or how it all began. And I'm not sure if I'll leave more questions with you today than I will answer, but the idea is to cause us to think today and to reflect upon the Word of God. I want to read a couple of verses and then ask the question. In Genesis 1 and 1, I read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and we just accept that by faith. And then I jump about 120 verses beyond that to Genesis 6, 5 and 6, and I read these verses. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. And in between those verses, there's another verse I want to bring to your attention in Genesis 1 and 27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Question, what happened between Genesis 1 and 1 and Genesis 6 and 6. What was so devastating that it caused the heart of God to be filled with pain? Or as one translation says, it broke his heart. Being made in the image of God is not a simple matter. And so right in the middle of what we're talking about here, the Bible references that humankind were created from the dust of the earth and made in the very image of God. You see, it's not a simple matter. This is not an afterthought of the Almighty, let us make man in our image. It was God's deliberate intention to make man with a functioning capacity to look after the physical creation that was all around him. And to be made in the image of God is to have a moral and a rational awareness. It also means that we share with him the experience of personality, truth, beauty, meaning, will, and reason. And those attributes allow us to relate to God in ways that other created beings cannot. It gives us great value in the eyes of God to be made in His very image. But back again to the question, what happened between Genesis 1 and 1 and Genesis 6 and 6? Let me just make this statement. God is to be respected. God is to be worshipped. God is to be listened to. It is not a small indiscretion or sleight of hand or a mind-boggling game to try and escape the consequences of disobeying God. You see, the heart of God loves humankind through the sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet in Genesis chapter 6, it makes this statement where God, upon looking at how sinful humankind had become, said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, for I am grieved that I had made him. So 
What was it that brought the destruction of humankind in the eyes of God? Well, obviously, he had had something to do with disobedience. And, and when God had created Adam and Eve, everything was for their sustenance. And God had provided everything that they would need to keep them moving forward, growing, enjoying life, enjoying each other, and enjoying communion with God the Father. And he said to Adam and Eve, he gave them this very direct commandment. He said, you are free to eat of any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you, just listen, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, this is a direct command by God. It's not confusing. It should not have been misunderstood. And, and God's intention was to keep Adam and Eve in line with his will for humankind in that we live in obedience to the commands of God. Well, with the passing of time, the devil came to Eve in a very subtle way. He came in the form of a serpent and kind of got Eve to one side and began to speak words of doubt into her mind. Remember, the command was clear and concise. And the devil kind of whispered in her spirit and said and asked the question, did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Are you sure that that was God's intentions? Now, Eve knew what the command was, and she knew the question that the devil was asking, and she was very upfront and said, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Eve knew the consequences of disobeying God, and the devil comes right back with another word into her spirit, a word of doubt, and said, but you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, this really pricked her thinking. And in her heart and in her mind, I can only imagine, though the Bible doesn't say, what can be really wrong with eating from that fruit? And yet subconsciously, there is the understanding that if I do, I'm going to die. And the Bible says both Adam and Eve indulged in the pleasure of disobedience. They totally and outright disobeyed God. And the Bible says that when they ate, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they fought, sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. You see, ladies and gentlemen, biblically speaking, theologically speaking, you cannot cover your sin. You cannot use fig leaves to get away from the fact that you have disobeyed God and you have sinned in the eyes of God. The only covering for our sin is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. And Adam and Eve in their consciousness knew that they had sinned against God. And they realized for the first time in their innocence that they were naked, that they were shameful, that they were sinful, and they tried to hide from God. Can you imagine trying to hide from the omnipotent God. And the word tells us that the omnipresence of God came to Adam and Eve in the garden, and the question was asked by God, where are you? Where are you? Now, God knew where they were physically. He knew the exact tree that they were hiding behind. But he wanted both Adam and Eve to regurgitate an answer that would satisfy God. And yet at the same time, give Adam and Eve the understanding that spiritually they had failed in their relationship with God. 
And so the blame game started. And, and, and judgment came on them. And, and Eve began to, to blame the devil for what had happened. And, and Adam got involved in the conversation. And it gets really interesting. The answer that Adam first gave was, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I had hid. Now, look what God says. God came back and says, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Now, God knew already the answer to these questions, but it was imperative that Adam and Eve accept accountability. Take responsibility for what you've done. And don't hide in the bushes. Don't blame each other. Don't blame the devil. But accept total and absolute responsibility for your failure to obey God. You know, humankind really has not changed down through the ages. Because when we do something that is wrong, Chances are we try to avoid the consequences by denying that which we have done. Now, the amazing thing about this is that at the end of the story, both Adam and Eve had been cursed by God, if you will read the Bible very clearly. And yet the heart of God still reached out in love. He still provided for them. He didn't take away their food supply. He didn't take away the things of nature. He didn't even take away the possibility of having fellowship and communion with Adam and Eve, and he loved them. And at the end of this story, it's important that you understand that down through the eons of time, God still sees on the horizon the cross and the death of Jesus Christ. And whatever sin that you and I may be guilty of today, I want to tell you that God, in the name of Jesus Christ, loves you dearly. I've made mistakes. I am 72 years old. All right. I know. Look at this face. Doesn't look 72. But I am 72, and I have made mistakes in my life. But the best thing that I could ever do is to hone up to it and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. Today, as we think about the story of Adam and Eve, and then of course, it moved on a little quicker where there was murder that came into the heart of their kids with Cain and Abel. They had already inherited the sinful nature of mom and dad. And, and, and this murder within the heart of Cain that resulted in the death of Abel is something that they had to live with or Cain had to live with for the rest of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know today that if you have sinned and if you want to come back into a right relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son, I would ask you as somebody who don't know you and I can't see you, but I know that God sees you and God knows you and God loves you. Accept Christ into your heart today. Let me pray with you. Father God, I thank you because we don't just have to talk about sin, but we can talk about the forgiveness of that sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. And may someone today listening to this very simple devotional reach out in faith and claim Christ as their Savior. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Amen.